So uh, um, I would like to introduce the second speakers. Now we've changed the focus from the medical students to the uh, resident trainees uh, uh, trainings in emergency medicines. And also we shift from India to Taiwan. The second speaker is uh, Dr. Zhang Yuqi uh, from the Department of Emergency Medicine, Chang'an Memorial to Hospital, uh, uh, Taiwan. He will represent the Taiwan Society of Emergency Medicines to talk about the uh, emergency medicine uh, education with this perspective of uh, resident training uh, training programs. So uh, please welcome the, uh, Dr. Zhang. Uh, thanks for uh, introduced by Alex. Uh, it's my honor to present our experience and the reflection on uh, emergency residency training program. Uh, can you see uh, my PPT? Yes. I'm Yu Zhang. Um, this is my education experience. Um, I have complete um, degree of master of science uh, about the institution of emergency and critical care. Also another degree is about the clinical education. I'm also a senior physician educator, um, take the role for about 12 years in Chang'e Memorial Hospital in Co. And also uh, has a role of director of emergency medicine residency training program since 2015. Uh, currently, I'm the chairman of Committee of Pediatric Emergency Medicine of TSEM, and also deputy chairman of the workforce of EM Professional Development. Uh, I also a founding member of the Chang'an Medical Education Research Center to build up and actively participate for the medical education research capacity. This is our hospital, of course, the um, one of the largest uh, healthcare system in Taiwan, uh, serve at least uh, one tenth the Taiwan people. So this is the outline I want to share with you um, around the emergency resident training in Taiwan and Asia, and also talking about the emergency medicine, work culture and the professional identity. Uh, also, we addressed a little bit a uh, challenge of emergency resident training and the CPME impacts on teaching and learning. Also, how we adapt uh, to this change and the future consideration. In Taiwan, um, medical um, resident training uh, takes uh, four years. Actually, if the uh, resident um, uh, can pick more elective course in PGY1 and PGY2, uh, which may make the training um, complete before uh, 3.5 years. This is a comparison um, uh, with the Asia country. Uh, the data is published in 2015. Of course, this is uh, out of date. I guess the, every country has uh, update information, but I didn't collect that very completely. So I just uh, show Taiwan data. Uh, you can see uh, in Taiwan, number of population per ED doctor uh, and the number of population per certificate emergency physician is quite similar, which means um, um, the emergency department was uh, provided service by qualified emergency physician, uh, maybe nearly 100% or 90%. So, um, it's a concern uh, about uh, emergency care quality and also the regulation about our accreditation. Medicine can consider as community of practice. Also our emergency medicine community is also a community of practice, which help our learner, so-called emergency resident, uh, can become uh, peripheral participation occasional participation and the total active participation become expert or become entering to the core group. How emergency physician and the resident ascribe uh, meaning to emergency care? Uh, we use a study um, to uh, inquire their opinion, how they conceptualize their meaning in their daily practice and uh, find conceptual metaphor are identified, include the world and the sports, safety net, gateway, and also market. I just used uh, one metaphor to um, explain why is this? Because the resident 
we consider uh, the critical condition in patient as explosive. So explosive can consider a source domain. Uh, he want to refer to critical condition in patient. So that is the target domain. So we also use the weapon to represent supporting staff to represent subspecialty consultation. And also the physician um, from other specialty can be a big line, big up. This is very important for emergency work context. And why is the safe net? Because they consider emergency physician take the role of less line of defense and the button of the social safety net. So which help public or help medical student to understand what kind of the work culture and specialty they will be engaged in the future if they are interested in that. A participant says um, the emergency department is like the death driftwood at the button of the society. The driftwood for the people at the button a shelter some abundant drug addiction, alcohol addiction. Yeah, which means that some people, uh, especially in low social class, uh, and the emergency department is the less the shelter or the less the rescue. This also highlights our professional identity or the role we take, we consider valuable in our daily practice. So emergency uh, work culture, we can consider metaphor, use different, different method can show certain aspect, which is emergency physician hold complex metaphorical representation about who they are, how they related to other physician and the patient, and their contribution to the healthcare system, which also reveal their multifaceted professional identity. We will also address identity in this uh, presentation. Uh, because professional identity underpin what we do. So, which might uh, help someone uh, have success in medical field and also have sense of oneself as a doctor or so-called emergency physician, emergency doctor, and also play a role or a key factor in job retention. We use the Q methodology to provide the foundation for the systemic study of subjectivity to understand what is the main viewpoint among the emergency physician, emergency resident who stay uh, in emergency workplace and not go away? This is the central feature uh, can recommend it to a person interested in qualitative aspect of their behavior. So 33 participants were enrolled uh, to do Q sorting in our study and uh, totally 25 uh, comprise the four viewpoints, which is important to su support their career, to enrich their mind or their value and belief to go further for their emergency career. I take example viewpoint one. Yeah, viewpoint one uh, emphasize group member, uh, there are seven uh, focus on skill acquisition, capability and practical wisdom. Viewpoint two comprises the co coping ability and resilience. Viewpoint three is professional recognition and self-esteem. Viewpoint four is well-being and the quality of life. For example, the viewpoint one says, um, they sought in the statement I list above uh, very uh, high, very high ranking. Uh, you can see being able to diagnose a medical condition quickly and they experience the free challenge and the emergency medicine bring every day. Being able to multitask, uh, having a challenge patient or learning to act and uh, behave like an emergency physician from my EP co-workers. So that is the skill acquisition capability and the practical wisdom, how they think very important uh, to assist uh, their willingness uh, in working in ED workplace. Yeah, this is a new challenge, a participant says. EM bring new challenge every day. That's actually why I choose emergency medicine in the first place. I really wanted to see a variety of patients and a patient who weren't necessarily easy to figure out. So it's up to me to find the answer. So this is an energy, an emergency physician, emergency resident, uh, very feel happy or feel enriched uh, in their daily practice. 
And our QMA strategy has revealed four different viewpoints or grouping that reflect how emerging physicians conceptualize their professional identity. And the different career stage may prioritize the disparate aspect of EM external recognition, teaching or physical strengths when thinking about their professional identity. The importance of external recognition of emergency medicine is contested among different factor group. Surprisingly, all factor group prioritize the teamwork. This is not distinguished from each other, but the same. Each group prioritizes teamwork in very high ranking, which means our emergency work style may be hangover, may be ship by ship. So we need to trust our member every day, every moment. Of course, uh, we still has uh, some challenge because the context is changed nowadays. We have encountered this challenge, um, which might uh, make the uh, junior doctor not make emergency department or emergency medicine as a top list of his career choice. And uh, we also try to implement uh, CBME, but have barrier for programmatic assessment. We have tension and uh, we also uh, got the impact from pandemic of COVID-19, which reduced and uh, the ED volume and reduced the EM residence clinical exposure. This uh, study disclosed uh, in the pandemic, uh, of course, the clinical exposure is decreasing and the disease pattern is still being changed. So the most important will be the pediatric. We all wish to understand our learner, our medical resident can be um, uh, closely monitored about their progression of their clinical competency. So in, in the past, uh, the main assessment might be measurement to distin distinguish yes or no, bad or good. But in progress, we need to use the assessment as judgment. Judgment uh, will be uh, helpful uh, to support the concept of assessment for learning. And finally, nowadays, we wish the assessment can be a system. This is a backbone of programmatic assessment. What is the tension in CBME imprint? That is a transparency. Tension among the clinical education arose when they given task to transparently make entrustment decision. Just say, I'm I cannot trust you to the resident. It's very difficult for clinical educator should be in another way. And the tension among the emergency resident with feedback arose when they must gauge the credibility of feedback they receive. Sometimes this is a hurt to the clinical educator. So we initiated a study to understand um, the entrustment decision or entrustment based supervision decision and the feedback receptivity. Actually, the supervision level we decided to assign to a resident, it is an important sign, important way of the feedback to the resident. This is a model of trust for clinical educator. When they intended intention to trust, it raised concern about who is the guy you want to trust, the resident character, and also the supervisor character, and uh, how about their relationship in the workplace? The determining factor also include the perceived risk to entrust the resident. That is a contextualized factor, such as the risk, the patient situation, or the task complexity. That is determined to the degree of the supervision. And uh, finally, they will have consensus of the outcome, feedback to the intention to trust uh, for the next time. For the resident, um, when feedback delivered, it starts the cycle of valuing. That is the resident will consider their intention and also the feedback content and also the resident character and the, the way the clinical educator deliver to the resident. Is the emotion be cared about or is the effectiveness achieved? So the center credibility also important uh, for the cycle of the value. Finally, the decision to use or disregard the feedback. How we adapt to this change? Of course, 
uh, we have the residency review committee to ensure the training uh, under the standard. Of course, we also want to keep the variety in different discipline, different hospital, different level of healthcare institution. We also strive to become an international hub of ACGME regional faculty development. And a lot of hospital, like say that uh, CMU uh, hospital uh, has actively been engaged in the faculty development toward the CPME, toward the ACGME standard. We also uh, strive our best to develop an electronic system to assist the competent based education, which is pivotal role uh, in assist uh, CBME implement. And uh, emergency skill training courses are highly expected desire among emergency residents in training. And the residency midterm competency program assessment is also regularly held by TSEM. And the uh, emergency medicine resident network yeah, this um, community is very unique and very welcome among the community of the emergency resident. Critical Western can be used to describe uh, TSEM action. Uh, find the right person using the right way and do the right things. Just want to appropriate uh, imprint CBME into our context. Follow international standard, but uh, toward the local need in teaching and learning, aim to improve their competency, aim to improve the programmatic assessment, aim to improve the endpoint we achieve when residents complete their training. Everything is transparency uh, can achieve or helpful for this goal. Of course, uh, full of difficulty uh, in the process. This is an example for glocalization. Yeah, we implement reference their milestone, but uh, has some Delphi technique in different hospital, invite the first line uh, healthcare provider in emergency department to have consensus on what kind of milestone, the educational outcome we aim to achieve. This is the electronic system uh, like Dalin Chiji Hospital and the Chang'e Memorial Hospital. We also has a uh, different uh, electronic system, but also taught the same way. But some hospital very creative and they make the output data about the competency assessment as figure, as visual uh, familiarity, very friendly to interpretation, very friendly to make decision, which will be informed CCC to help understand the resident progress in their competency. This is an emergency skill training um, workshop like ENT or ophthalmology. Yeah, this kind of the skill is not very easy to be familiar uh, in a short time. So regular to hold this kind of workshop will help resident. And this is a midterm competency progress exam. Uh, for EMRN, uh, very uh, welcome uh, Western community in Taiwan, and also they um, hold a boot camp for newcomer, and also have the career time run in our annual annually, and also has prepared newcomer orientation hangout, include introduction for different hospital, different training program, different role model, and they also connect the Singapore, Hong Kong, and uh, others uh, to have exchange forum. For the future, uh, we can see and expected to have a data-driven residency training and reform because data based on science, we can uh, go uh, straight and go uh, with confidence. The training program accreditation and the quality should be ensured and a resident uh, RRC uh, is a, a good choice. And then we also work for Collaboration from association with government. Expectedly, uh, the national promotion of CBME include faculty development and the CCC 
is very important for the next stage of the uh, resident training. So even Taiwan government also uh, has uh, initiated some practical action to support this strategy, and the success will be um, will be achieved uh, in the near future. And we also initiate a cross label joint the training program. That is, uh, the resident should be uh, training in medical center. Also, has some times to be in the remote area where the resource of the medical care is limited. They should be uh, familiar with how to do, how to play their role there. And also, we have the core learning experience with progress progression. Of course, this need to uh, regularly check and uh, good system assistant. And for the decreasing application of the emergency medicine uh, training for some junior health doctor, they hesitated to be an emergency physician. We need to develop a more emergency medicine subspecialty and uh, help them to understand the alternate career paths in the future. Of course, which were starting from co-learning and the co-creation with resident in the beginning. Just like uh, right side we say, who you are and who you want to be. That is very important to have the consensus with the residents or the medical students in the future. By this, we can uh, complete the goal uh, is the uh, programmatic assessment and uh, have next accreditation system and also achieve their professional identity, not only for medical uh, a student, but also to enhance the uh, emergency resident and also emergency physician who are already uh, spend time, to spend their life in the emergency uh, workplace. Uh, thanks for your participation. This is my talk. Thank you very much uh, for Dr. Chan's uh, for the presentations and your introductions on the emergency resident uh, training uh, programs in, in Taiwan. In fact, uh, uh, Taiwan has uh, started a lot of initiative on different aspects of the trainings related to emergency medicine uh, resident trainee. And uh, it is glad that uh, Hong Kong and also our Singaporeans, actually we have some uh, opportunity to liaise with the Taiwan's uh, uh, colleagues so that they, we, they can share and they enhance their trainings uh, in emergency medicine. Uh, 